Almeria, but I'd say it's a pretty central place to start if you're looking to relocate to somewhere around this area. The province of Almeria is in southeast Spain, bordering with the provinces of Granada and Murcia. The area covers 8,774 square kilometres, with a population of around half a million. A third of those live in the capital city, Almeria. With improved road links and an airport, infrastructure is getting better. Sunshine is big business in the province. An average of over 320 days of it a year means that Almeria is one of Europe's top agricultural producers. The region contains some of the most unspoilt and deserted areas along the coast, and you'll get a feel for the real Spain. Costa de Almeria is very much a growth area in the Spanish property market. Um, prices were much lower in the past than in costas like the Costa del Sol or the Costa Blanca, but they're now uh, doing a lot of uh, infrastructure investments to put in the roads and the airport and the types of leisure facilities that they have in the Costa del Sol. And the local government in, the, in Almeria wants to make, uh, wants to give Almeria the same kind of facilities and services. Uh, they're also investing heavily for the Mediterranean Games in 2005, which is having an interesting impact on the, uh, on the property market because they're going to, rather like the Olympic Games in Barcelona in 92, they're hoping that it's going to have a similar impact uh, on the local Amaria property market because of the big investment that the local government will make in the, in the infrastructure in, in the area. It's got a, one of the best climates in the whole of Spain. It's, it's hot, but it's also dry, uh, which uh, many people find quite agreeable. All in all, one, a, an area to watch. I'm in the beautiful village of Torre. It's about a 10 to 15 minute drive to the coast. Now, although you can see some cranes and there's a little bit of construction going on, the scenery is spectacular. You've got mountains either side. It is beautiful. Far from the maddening crowd, Torre is to the north of the national park of Cabo de Gata, as yet sparsely populated by foreigners. Because of its setting and location, it's an inland town to keep an eye on for future development. Close by, the village of Mahaka is a typical white Mediterranean village on a hill, set back from the sea. To get a sense of the market, we talk to two estate agents at opposite ends of the province. In the north, you'll find the more subdued resorts like Mahaka and the pretty coastal town of Bia Ricos. Fred, I understand that Costa Almeria is becoming increasingly popular amongst the Brits. Brits and Northern Europeans. From Norway, Sweden and into the United Kingdom and certainly into uh, Southern Ireland, it has become a very attractive place in the last two years. What's so special about it? It's undeveloped. It is still the most undeveloped area of the whole of the costas. And it perhaps is one of the last parts of Spain which actually still has a real Spanish flavour to it. So what's your nearest airport? Uh, Almeria itself, and, and that is opening up. We have the uh, Mediterranean Games in Almeria next year, and so the airport is being expanded tremendously. And now with that, with motorway access to here, you can be uh, from the airport into here in less than 50 minutes. What percentage of Spanish live in the area? In this area here, I would say 98%, perhaps even higher, in this village are Spanish people. And traditionally, family people who've been here from the days, most likely, when the Romans came. Are you finding that more and more Brits are becoming aware of this beautiful little area? I would say in this region now, in the last six months, on the Costa Almeria, property prices have gone up by a minimum of 20% in six months because it's now been discovered. I sometimes tend to think I'm falling on my own sword because I have a treasure that everybody is now coming to. Uh, but we're very restricted in this region as to where we can build. We're not allowed to build past three floors high. We don't have any sort of blocks on the landscape like that. And we're also behind here. It's all a uh, natural park. We're not allowed to build in there either. We can only build in between existing houses or reform traditional houses. Fred, am I right in thinking that estate agents in the UK 
serve a slightly different function than they do in Spain. You're more than just a property finder, aren't you? We are, yeah. We actually, uh, we're an extension, truly, an, I believe, an extension to their family. We actually become like management companies for them as well. Uh, the people who perhaps are only here for the winter, and that's a, a big thing in this area, um, they bring us their keys when they go home to say, you know, uh, my daughter is going to be coming in a couple of weeks. Can you let her have the key? Uh, my taps are leaking. Um, you know, uh, electricity. Oh, I want to buy a car. 101 things they want to do. They come to us. What costs are involved with buying a property? The, obviously, the initial money to buy the property. We also have the 7% tax, and you also obviously would have legal expenses. Legal expenses in this area are a little less than the other costers. Um, most likely to buy a hundred thousand pound property, you would be talking two, three thousand pounds tops. You would have, you know, really? two. That would be stamp duties, legal costs, reconnections or new connections. And that would cover it. Would you recommend people use a Spanish lawyer or a British lawyer? We always advise our clients to go to a Spanish lawyer, an English-speaking Spanish lawyer. They are here. They know their way to the town hall. They can do the searches for you. They can also obtain all the things like NIE numbers and those things. Make sure the connections are on to the house, the water, gas, etc., etc. Whereas um, I know people feel comfortable with an English-speaking lawyer back at home, but we often find that when people have done that, they're at the notary and they walk out and they think, well, how do I get my NIE number? How do I get services to my house? They then have to go to a Spanish lawyer and they double their cost. To the south, you'll find the big tourist resorts with plenty of opportunity to buy off-plan properties. One bedroom apartments start around about 90,000 euros, depending on the area in Almeria and how old the building is, off new build, um, because developers have to buy the land at a much more expensive price. They do start a little bit more expensive. Um, you're looking at about 120 up to 150,000 euros for one bedroom. If the show house is a standard two-bedroom apartment on the complex, You've got the kitchen, um, you have a utility room, you also have the two bedrooms, um, a bathroom, lounge, dining area and a, and a, a large terrace. Um, the kitchen will be fully fitted and fully finished and so is the bathroom. The rest of the flat unfortunately won't be as picturesque as you've seen today. No light fittings and absolutely no furniture whatsoever. In the place of um, our Mary Mar, for example, it's more the retired couple that are going to come and live here um, because of the flat, the flat area. Um, they don't like hilly sides, so a lot of the people come in for the sun as well. Um, it's one of the places in Europe with the most sun all year round. As you can see, it's November and it's and the sun's beating down on us. We've got the marina in Almeria, um, which a lot of people do come to in the winter months to, to stay on their boats, being a cheap port. And we've also have a ski resort in the Sierra Nevadas, which is a two-hour drive from, from a roughly two-hour drive from Almeria. Don't get tempted by your, your free trips of coming across, because you're going to get pushed into hard salesmanship. Come over, come and rent somewhere for a couple of months, get the feel for it. A lot of people are disappointed when they do come over. Not a lot, but some people are disappointed, and they miss home, they miss their family. So get a feel for the area first. Generally, people thinking about moving to Spain think about the coast first, but don't dismiss moving further inland. You get more of a flavour of the real Spain. Also, property prices tend to be that bit cheaper. Property prices have risen steadily over the last few years. In the last year alone, by about 20%. And unlike its other Costa neighbours, development is much more restricted here. In some areas, buildings can only be four storeys high. This means a much more pleasant landscape, even in the built-up areas. Coming up, we meet some of the people who have made the move to Costa Almeria and get some good advice from independent experts. All the hidden costs, apart from the cost of the house. Removals. It's a very stressful time, moving house. Price. The price. I think easily the most daunting thing when entering the property market is you, you're tied down for a mortgage for 25 years. I'm here just outside the beautiful town of Mahaca to meet a man who made the move to Spain nine years ago. 
So, Matt, you left the UK. What was your motivation? I just... I'd had enough of the UK. It wasn't... Things weren't going very well there, and... I'd been going sort of into Ibiza for uh, probably about eight, nine years on holiday, and always said I'd like to try and get a bar there. And uh, one day I decided, right, that's it, I'm going to do it. And uh, then you came here just recently? Yeah, I moved here in May, and I was looking for something new. And then some friends of mine said, come and have a look over here. And I was here for like a week, having a look around, found a place I liked and stayed. <laughs> really? So. And you recently bought a bar? Yeah, and it was two empty shells. And I uh, thought that looks a challenge, get it built as a bar. And uh, it took me about three months to get it ready. And uh, we opened, what, seven weeks ago. So what's so charming about the beautiful Mahaka? Uh, it's a totally different sort of place. It's so relaxing and nice. It's the weather you've got all year round here as well, you know, the weather's good all year. And you haven't got the rat race, you know, you're not rushing around all the time. You can just, in fact, sometimes it's too laid back. It's annoying sometimes, you know, you go to some offices or banks to get something done. It's, everything's manana, manana, yes. Mm -hmm. They're very, very, uh, very laid back. So I found here, well, since I've been here, actually, the people here are very, very nice. Yeah? Yeah, they are really very friendly. Are you finding it's mostly British people or Spanish people in this area? Very British. There's a very, very mm -hmm. big um, British community who live here all year round. Um, a lot of them just come here for the, the winter months, rent their premises out all summer and live here themselves in the winter. August is very, very, very Spanish. All the Spanish come here on holiday, gets them up where they normally shut down everywhere else and they come here for a month. Do you think it's beneficial to be able to speak Spanish when you move out here? I do, I think it's definitely easier and you get a lot more respect from the Spanish, they help you a lot more if you are using it. There's a party going on over there yeah. somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, we've got a Halloween party tonight, so they're in there now decorating the place out. Fabulous. Job-wise, how, how is it for British people to find jobs over here? If you're looking to do anything in the bar or restaurant trade, then it's very easy. Um, people just come out, look around and you know, they just go around and ask from bar to bar. But, if you're coming out to do anything else, it's very hard. You know, I know people that come out that are in the building trade, plumbers, etc. They find it very hard to get into the into the trade because the Spanish have that sewn up. Unless you can actually speak fluent, then you can get jobs in that trade. But if not, it's just bar and restaurants. Is it cheaper to live in this part of Spain than in the UK? I would say yes, definitely. I mean, the cost of living here is very cheap. Um, food and drinks, etc., a lot cheaper. Accommodation is very cheap. For example, to rent a sort of a two bedrooms accommodation here, you're looking, if you're looking all year round, it's probably around about 500 euros a month, which is what, 300 pounds a month for sort of on front line along here somewhere, you know? So mm -hmm. it's definitely a lot cheaper here. Right, Matt, tell me, what do you miss about the UK? Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. So apart from their family, nothing at all. There is, I wouldn't go back. You couldn't pay me to go back. <laughs> Matt's Bar, the beach coma, is a popular haunt for local expats. And while we were there, they proved the point and threw a fabulous Halloween party. Mahaka is one of the attractions in the northern part of the province. Whitewashed houses, quaint cobbled streets and souvenir shops are its trademarks. It's also been a favourite location for artists and writers over the years. These days it's holiday makers staying in the local beach resort that are drawn to the village. It's only five minutes from the coast making this a very popular area to buy because you've the best of both worlds. Further south in the province are the bigger resorts of Almeri Mar and Roquetas de Mar. They offer more facilities, but also many more residents, which means that they're also more reminiscent of the well-known costas, Blanca and Del Sol. We met a couple who picked Almeri Mar in this part of the province to retire to, whilst making an investment in the property market. We came to Almeria nearly six years ago, um, bought an apartment down in Marquetas, and then we ended up uh, in El Merimar here, um, uh, beginning of February, um, and that's when we actually moved over on a permanent basis. But we came for the, mainly for the sunshine and uh, the slow pace of life, and it's been really good for my health because <laughs> I've had a back problem. And it's done the world of good, you know, it's helped my, my back anyway. It's, uh, I've had no problems at all since I've been in all this lovely sunshine. 
we bought the uh, flat in Raketas and I think it cost us um, at the time, which was 11 and a half million pesetas. We bought it as a main base uh, while we sort of looked around for something that we really wanted to stay in. And, um, but we just sort of rented out, you know, during the uh, periods that it's not, it's not being used. Although it's only one bedroom, it feels quite spacious because it was built as a residential apartment and not as a holiday apartment. The holiday apartments these days are, are a lot smaller. Raketas is a bit more touristy, uh, more seafront, and uh, cafe bars and, and that sort of thing, you know. Well, we bought the apartment in El Merimar, uh, mainly because of the view, and we knew that nothing could be built in front of it, so you always had that uh, picturesque um, situation. We paid about £66,000 for the apartment um, in November 2003. And in the last eight months or so, it must have risen now to about 115,000. We bought in Ulsterduk, um initially on the price of the property. We were looking through the internet and looking at houses. Um, and we came across this one, which seemed a lot cheaper than everything else. And it was only the equivalent of 33,000 mm. euros. So we thought, well, we'll go and have a look at it and see is why it is so much cheaper. And I think that's because the, the village is quite tiny. It doesn't have much going for it in the way it had one bar. It hasn't got any shops. They needed people to come back into the village and inject a bit of life back into it. And when we first went there, everybody came out on the streets. They knew who we were before we even sort of stepped out of the car. Um, and they've been very, very welcoming to us. And it all culminated in the fiesta in August when on the last night of the fiesta, I was asked to join in the fireworks surrounding the, the burning of the vixen, which was something rather bizarre, where we paraded um, a stall full of fireworks up and down the village square. And then the men took over and set these fireworks alight, and they were canyoning off the walls. But I think as an outsider, I felt quite privileged that I'd been <laughs> asked to carry on in part of that tradition. The best thing to do, I think, these days is to go onto the internet. There are so many groups on the internet that are concerned with El Maria particularly, and you can ask anyone any question and get recommendations from people who have bought in your particular area. I mean, some people do have problems, but you'd have problems in England buying and selling a house. Um, but touch wood, we've been lucky, we haven't had any problems at all. I hope El Maria won't become as touristy as the Costa Blanca in 10 years. Um, but if it does, then it's because that's what the Spanish in El Maria want it to be like. Um, after all, we're guests in their country. They don't have to keep it in the dark ages just because we want it like that. If they want progress and they think that becoming like Torre Molinos or Benidorm is progress for them, then that's what it's going to be. One of the attractions of living in Spain is the better quality of life. In actual fact, the cost of living is about 40% cheaper than in the UK, which means you can afford more for your money. And if the Costa Al Maria is sounding too good to be true, it is. There's one catch. There are miles of these ugly plastic greenhouses. Al Maria is one of the biggest producers of fruit and vegetables in Europe. Holidaymakers on the coast might avoid the eyesore, but it's much more prominent for those living inland, especially in southern Almeria. And before you think about taking the plunge and buying a home in Spain, do your research. Here are a few useful tips from some independent experts. I would say if you're thinking about buying a property in Spain, you need to take your time. Take it easy, don't come over to buy a house in a weekend. Choose a good estate agent, a legal estate agent that is registered as an estate agent. I would look at property, various properties, resale properties as well as new properties. Um, and I would get yourself a very good solicitor who speaks good English. Preferably recommended, not by your estate agent, by other people. Go to bars and cafes and meet people that live here, they will have good recommendations. When people are buying country property, there are many, many different laws in relationship to inheritance taxes and inheriting property. 
Uh, you might buy a property, for example, that has passed down a generation to seven different siblings. And as such, you might buy this property and only own one-seventh of the property. And you have to keep buying the other parts before you own the whole property. A lot of property now, unfortunately, is they don't have planning permission. People have recently purchased property here. They've just knocked them all down. And they're going to lose their money. There's no recourse at this point. So there's many things you have to look out for. Well, if you're thinking about buying in Spain, it helps to do a little or a significant amount of preliminary research because it's going to be a very big investment uh, for most people. You can go onto the website and look at the properties offered by different companies. Pre-internet, people wouldn't have had this option to get a very clear idea of not just from the companies that they're talking to, but from many companies. And that's always very important because to understand whether a property is worth the price they're asking, you have to compare it to other properties, similar properties in the same area. So that's one good thing you can do. Two other things I think I'd like to point out that you should do is one is try and get good recommendations from the estate agents. If you're planning to use an estate agent, talk to friends or, or anyone you know, in fact, who has bought property in Spain, and if possible, go with a company that comes with a good recommendation from either them or someone else you trust, because um, it's very important to use a good estate agent with buying, when buying property in Spain, someone who is honest and doesn't put you under pressure and shows you what is, uh, in their opinion, the best properties on the market given your budget and requirements rather than an estate agent that's just focusing on selling you the properties that have the most interesting commission for them. The other thing that's worth doing is talking early on, if you've decided to buy property in a country like Spain, get your finances sorted out at the beginning and that means go and talk to a good mortgage broker about so that you get a clear idea of your budget. I've seen too many cases where the financing is left until the last minute and uh, that means that Quite often, you know, a lot of time is wasted by people making, going to see properties and making offers on something they then can't afford. There's a lot of heartache, a lot of people get very frustrated. So no harm at all in talking to a good broker and getting a very clear idea what your, what your finances will permit, um, given your, you know, how much you can borrow, how much equity you're going to have, and what kind of property you'll be able to get with that. And here's a guide to average property prices in Costa Almeria and some other local information to help you settle in the area. Maria don't tend to have the infrastructure that the other parts, the more touristy parts of Spain tend to offer. This area of Spain is undeniably absolutely beautiful and whilst there are building sites, the developments do seem to be on a lesser scale. For my money, this area, Costa Almeria, is one to watch out for. your home look like?